Some new and important breaking news today, reporting on the January 6th committee investigation. Multiple sources now tell CNN there are hours-long gaps in presidential records turned over to the panel. Sources say the White House call logs, phone call logs from Insurrection Day are blank from the time the president returned from his speech on the ellipse until he gave a Rose Garden speech hours later, in between, of course, prior to storm the U.S. Capitol. Let's get straight at the Capitol Hill scene. It's Ryan Nobles. Ryan, walk us through what we know now and what the big controversy is. Well, John, uh, these are important records that are a key part of the investigation uh, by the January 6th Select Committee. And you'll remember this is information that they fought in court to obtain. It was a court case that went all the way to the Supreme Court, and it was something that the former president and his lawyers desperately wanted to keep secret. Well, we're now being told by multiple sources that have reviewed this initial tranche of, of, of records that the phone records from the day of January 6th and also a supplemental diary that uh, outlines the president's movements on that day uh, show a period of time from around the time he came back from the White House until the time that he gave that speech from the Rose Garden uh, where he does not take or receive any phone calls. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean he didn't take phone calls. In fact, there are reported examples of phone calls that he either made or took during that period of time. One to the House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy, another to Senator, T Senator Tommy Tuberville that came through Senator Mike Lee. But the point here is, on these official White House records, which are supposed to be the keeper of this information during his administration, that period of time shows no record of any calls. So that does make the work of the January 6th committee just a little bit more complicated. They now have to figure out what the president was up to during that period of time as they try and paint the picture of this piece of history and exactly the role that the president played at that time. Now, the committee sources that I've talked to are insistent that these records are not the end-all, be-all of their investigation. It is certainly a roadblock, but they feel that they can find more information from a wide range of sources. First, they haven't yet to receive all the documents from the National Archives. That information uh, is still coming in. There could be pieces of information within these other tranches that reveal something having to do with the president's communications at that time. And they are also casting a wide net in terms of the interviews and depositions that they are holding, which are also providing insight into who the president was talking at that time. And we actually have a specific example of that. Uh, there is a record uh, before the president leaves the White House to go to give that speech at the rally uh, where it, it it indicates in the log that the president attempted to reach out to the, the former vice president, Mike Pence, and that P Pence was not available to take the call. The record does not reflect that Pence returned that call and that they talked. However, the committee interviewed Keith Kellogg, who was the national security advisor to Mike Pence at that time, and Kellogg, in his deposition to the committee, recounted a phone call that took place from the Oval Office to Mike Pence where he was in the Oval Office listening in on the president's end of that conversation. We know of that because the committee made reference in it in their letter to Ivanka Trump. So the big point here, John, is that there are significant gaps in information that are not part of the official record that the committee is now going to have to put the pieces together to figure out exactly what happened and when. And it also raises serious questions about the keeping of records for the Trump administration. This is one example. We've seen multiple other examples of that in the reporting that has come out this week. John. Ryan Nobles, important reporting. Appreciate the live hit from Capitol Hill. Let's bring it back into the room with our reporters. Caitlin, you covered the Trump White House at this time. Uh, we're going to get in a moment. Ryan makes a key point. Phone logs missing or not complete. Pick your word for it. One issue. Uh, documents missing. Doctor, documents shredded. That's another one. We'll get to the documents in a minute. You covered the White House at that time. And I remember in those days, uh, President Trump didn't like to use the official lines because he was paranoid, didn't know who was listening. Uh, and so he used to use his own personal cell phone and sometimes borrow cell phones from aides. Is that right? Also, he didn't like people knowing who he was calling. When John Kelly was the chief of staff, he tried to be much more rigorous than the other ones. He would review the call logs to see who Trump was talking to and tried to get Trump to only use the White House switchboard to make calls to people. The White House switchboard calls people and puts you in touch with the person that the president is trying to get in touch with. Trump liked to use his phone, and he liked that because he didn't want everyone always knowing who he was speaking to. He just thought it was easier. Sometimes, I remember when John Kelly was chief of staff, Trump would say, I'll call you later from the residence on my phone. So then it's not a log of this conversation that we had, just because that was how he operated. So when the January 6th committee tried to get these phone records right away, I knew that all of these are not going to be in the call logs because Trump did use his personal phone a lot. I do think it's actually a huge roadblock for the January 6th committee because they're trying to paint a picture of what Trump was doing in those hours uh, between when the insurrection and the riot happened 
and when he issued that video later on that night, of which we know there were several iterations. We know of people that the president spoke with, but we've also seen that a lot of people were trying to get in touch with Mark Meadows, his chief of staff, other people inside the West Wing to try to deliver messages to Trump that day.